All right, let's take a look at how we're creating a tile set and what the applications of a tile set are. Just as a reminder, I have these resources in our Google Drive folder, and here are a number of different examples of tile sets, many of which are in our uh, modular, our module, excuse me. I'm not sharing. Sorry? Oh, I'm not sharing. I'm sharing. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. I want to share my screen. I was recording, but I forgot to do the sharing part for you guys. Okay, these, which I have in this little folder here, many of which are in our page that uh, I created for, with information about tile sets. If you didn't quite understand what was going on, then I can explain a little bit now. Tile sets are sort of like this palette of detailed information that you pick from and you sort of paint your world with. And they look a little bit odd by themselves because this is just every single possible kind of detail that you could be using. And many of them will be used multiple times or are only useful in certain situations. Um, a lot of times when you look at a tile set directly, you can kind of put together what's going on. Like for instance, these little grass tiles up here, one of them is flowers, one of them is grass. And you can kind of tell that they would be interchangeable on top of dirt. So wherever we've got dirt detail that's ending in the previous tile, you could set this on top to have grass standing up above the end of that tile. But we've also got tiles down here, lot, many of which have grass on top. But if you just kind of look at where the division between the previous tile uh, is right here, a lot of this grass is meant to be combined with this tile below to create a more you know continuous kind of vertical um, grass that's sticking up above the end of the tile. So it's stuff like that that make uh, tile sets uh, work and they're interesting because they're a really efficient way to build a pixel world and we sort of use the same approach even with 3D assets. I think I put this in our page which is Roller Coaster Tycoon. Itself was a 2D game but simulating sort of a 3D perspective and over here I have a big list of all of the various grass tiles that were necessary to make it look like it was um, you know fully three-dimensional sculpted landscape and then here they are semi assembled to kind of give the impression that it's a, a 3D world so we use this approach even with full 3D assets we will construct 3D assets so that they fit together in a three-dimensional grid um, making sure that there's no seams between each of the pieces and so Ultimately, this is a, a really extensible skill, the idea of making a tile set or making a, a small modular asset that can be duplicated all over your game world. And so this is a good time to start practicing it in pixel art because it's a nice easy way um, to get started with this concept. And not all of the tiles are 100% um, solid. Sometimes you'll have transparent things that sit on others. This one from Super Nintendo looks like they always had a little bit of grass showing around them, but it's pretty common for like instance here's a bunch of furniture to have some um, tiles with a transparent background that you can just place anywhere such as decorative tiles or uh, maybe interactables like objects or something okay so i'm going to be using <clears throat> here we are this one this is the basic platforms.png which is what you're to be using in your homework to create some tiles and I've got it open in Piscal right up here. I've also got, before I start working on that, a tiling repeatable background that I've made in three different parts. So I'm going to turn the layer preview off for all three so I can show you what the three different layers are comprised of. I've got a sky for the extreme background. I've got mountains, which have transparency above them so that we can see the sky. And I've got trees which are very very transparent but they all need all three of them need to be exactly this size This is a 64 by 64 tile um, size so that they can all layer one on top of the other um, rather than exporting them all together like this I exported them one at a time and then imported them into unity so you can see the previews here for those of you who have maybe never seen Unity before, Unity is what we use at Norco for our game development uh, because it's very, very easy to learn, very easy to use, can uh, support both 3D and 2D games, and is becoming more and more sophisticated all the time as it is being improved upon. And it is free to use unless you publish something and sell, I think it's like, I forget what the number is, but like more than 200,000 
bucks you make off of it you can publish whatever you want for um, for free but don't quote me on that you should probably go to the actual site to to see what the details of that are well anyway I've got the mountain gif down here or the PNG I've got the sky right here and I've got the trees um, when you import something into unity directly there's a bunch of settings to change which is something you'll learn when you get into uh, more serious game development but just suffice it to say that I have to set um, the size of this in units which I've set as 32 because that's what my tile set is set to and I do also have to worry about the wrapping mode and the filtering mode we don't want to filter for pixel art so I turn it all the way off to point and then for tile sets there's even more stuff to do but for that we're all set up um, this is the editable um, scene where we can see a few things floating around for instance that camera is the viewport of the scene. There we go, I can move it around. Uh, then we've got some objects over here in the hierarchy, and I've got the grid, which is actually the tile set that I'm going to demonstrate in just a little while. The sky, which is a bunch of duplicates of the sky right next to itself so that it creates a longer strip. So if I select one of these individually, there we go, you can see I've just duplicated across. There's better ways to do this, like we can create a, a texture that tiles infinitely if we want to but this is the simplest way to achieve what I'm looking for then we've got the mountains there we go and we've got the trees and we have to worry about what renders on top of what so I've set them to render with the sky in the background mountains next then the trees and then finally the tiles in front of all of that stuff um, the cool thing about this the reason that I did this in different layers is so that we can create a parallax effect so a parallaxing effect is what you get when you're driving on the freeway. You look out your window and you see the mountains in the distance. The mountains should move very little compared to your viewpoint because they're so far away. Then things that are a little bit closer to you will move more. And so even though the sky technically wouldn't move, I've got texture in the sky so that the sky is moving the least. Then the mountains are moving a little bit. The trees are moving a lot, and then the tiles themselves are the things actually right next to you. They're going to move the most. So to demonstrate that, uh, here's my game view. I'm going to pop this game view out so that we can keep our eye on it. And then I'm going to hit play. So in the scene view now, so this is actually running. There's nothing happening because I've only programmed very, very limited uh, interaction. In the scene view, I'm going to grab this main camera and slide it back and forth so that you can see what's happening. So as I move, the sky is matching perfectly to my camera, which I could reduce. I could make it move a little bit less. The mountains are sliding along with my camera, but slower than my camera is going. And the trees are not moving at all. I actually thought I told them to move a little bit, but I can change it. And then the uh, platforms are just ignoring everything and they're just staying right where they are. So this would be an example of a parallaxing effect as you see in the lower right hand side when I move the camera. We've got this cool kind of layered semi three dimensional effect, even though everything in the scene view is completely flat. See, it's all on one single plane there. Okay. Let me go ahead and stop this and I'll show you some of the function um, that I've programmed in. With each one of these groups here, there's a little script and the script has some logic in it, which I could show you real fast. And the logic is just establishing what are we playing with. We're playing with the camera. We need a variable, which is a multiplier, which is how much it's going to move. And then on update, it's just saying um, this thing's position should match itself to the camera's X position times the multiplier. And the rest of it just stays the same. So that's all that's happening. Very, very simple kind of script. So in each one of these, I'm just using that same script over and over, just with a different number. So if I check the trees, so I told the trees, oh, I didn't give the trees a reference to the camera. So they were actually broken. Okay, so now I drag that in. The trees are supposed to move 25%. The mountain is moving 50% of my camera's movement. The sky is moving 100%. Let's reduce the sky to like 90, just so that it moves a little bit less. And then if I hit play again and drag in the camera so we can see what happens now when I move this there we go you can see the sky drifting just a little bit in the background there and now the trees are not matching to either the tiles or the mountains so we can just see a nice kind of layered movement effect and the farther I go the farther they'll go until it completely breaks 
which is why we probably need a better solution for this because my entire background will fly apart at some point. See, there it goes. Everything's gone except for sky, which will last a long time, um, which is why we'd probably need the tiles to either replace themselves in the front over and over or really just have a, a texture that is scrolling instead. But this will work for a very small space. Um, keep in mind, by the way, that this doesn't work vertically. I didn't tell it to do anything vertically, so we'll just leave if I move vertically. But we could set the parallax up for both X and Y directions if we really wanted to. Okay. So you guys see how that's working? Any questions about that? Just kind of an example of how we would set up a little, little game environment. You guys good? Yeah. Okay. So this would be similar to any side-scrolling platformer like this one right here. Um, very likely the clouds and sky are going to be one texture. Maybe the clouds are separate and just floating in space back there. The big trees in the background for sure, and probably these rocks are all going to be separate. So we'll have one, two, three layers. And then all of this active stuff in the game world would be moving one to one with the camera movement. So as your camera moves, you just scroll across the scene. Um, that gives you an idea of how to set this sort of thing up and a feeling of depth and presence in the world, which is a lot nicer than just having a fully two-dimensional um, kind of setup. Even in uh, Mario, those big cloudy um, shapes in the background, which I think are leaves, they were scrolling a little bit less than the camera movement as well. So you can go quite far back. Probably you'd have to go all the way back to like Mario Brothers 2 on um, regular NES before you would find this parallax uh, missing. But I wouldn't be surprised if they had it back there too, because it's a, it's a pretty easy effect to accomplish, as you can see. Okay. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and redock this. And let's take a look instead then at this part, which is the active part of the game world. So this is the tile set being used. And the one I created as a test earlier, there we go, looks like this. These are just matched up perfectly to the template. So here's the template over here. I actually imported both of them, so I could paint tiles with the template if we wanted to, just like that. But let's not. <laughs> Let me just get rid of that. Uh oh, how do I erase? There we go, eraser. And so you can see that I've got this tile palette, which requires its own setup and import and things like that. And I've got this um, little bit of art which matches that. And so now I've got this set of tiles that can um, help me to draw in this game world. So if I want to, let's, uh, let's erase out all this just to use this tile set real quick. Um, typically, you'd probably just pick any old tile and just kind of sketch in the shape that you want first. So I'll just make a few floating islands and platforms and things like that. Um, you might have automated logic which takes care of the um, the nice shaping of this of this to make like a left edge look like a left edge or a right or a center. Um, that's also fully supported by Unity, by the way. But we're going to just do it by hand to keep it kind of visually simplistic. Um, so once I've sketched in these shapes, I would need to replace those tiles with ones that are appropriate out of my set. So you can see here the reason that we've got these shapes in particular, or these shapes, right? is so we can have a center, like a fully filled uh, dirt or machinery or whatever you want to make it, top edge, corners, side edges, and then bottoms and bottom corners. So you might think that that encompasses everything that you would need, but here I've got a little floating platform. If I place this here, as we can see, that doesn't really look very complete, does it? And so we've got these single wide tiles as well. Um, single vertical, single horizontal with a left side, right side, and a top and a bottom and a middle and a middle. And then we've got this tiny little floating all by itself little nugget of detail that we could just pop up in the air somewhere like that. So instead, I'll go ahead and use this one for all three of those. That just about does it, but there's this kind of unpleasant harsh edge on the end. So we could probably get away with just one tile for one wide platforms, but it's even nicer if we provide the endpoints and then it looks more complete. Uh, but part of the concept of creating a tiled map is that everything should be repeatable um, in its appropriate dimension. So in this case, this center tile is supposed to be able to repeat with itself infinitely 
and then hook up with these endpoints. So that if we, we look closely, this dirt detail and the grass detail appears to just repeat over and over and over again, however long I make this tile. And so that makes it more convenient to use. Then if I want to chop it into two tiles, I'll just put an endpoint and an endpoint. And then for this one, just erase. And now I've got two tiles separated like that. So really quickly, let me clean up this space to get it to look more reasonable. So I want to find all of the upper corners like this, all of the left upper corners like this, the lower corners or sides wherever it's appropriate. So here, here, uh, I don't know about that yet. I'll come back to it. Sides, so like this one would be a side, bottom. Um, this one would be a fill or Wait, that one would probably be a right-hand side. This one would be a bottom, like that. Here's a corner. This is a fill. That's a inner corner, actually, but we'll get to that. I'll just fill it for the moment. And that's a fill. So here's our almost complete platform. I'll do the same thing down here. We've got one fill, right corner, bottom, bottom edges. And yeah, that looks about right. So here they are almost complete. And I say almost because we do have an extra set of four down here, which I don't remember if that's on the template or not. Do you guys happen to remember if that was on the template? Let's go see. I don't think so. Don't think so. Oh, no, wait. Yeah, it is. There they are. These four over here. So what those four are are inner edges. So they are useful for this kind of situation right here. So if I just erase that out, erase that, erase that, erase that, those three are completely buried, right, inside of this platform. So if I cover them with just plain, we get this kind of hard edge right at this corner where this wall and this wall meet, which doesn't quite look well thought out. We're also getting that same situation over here, but in this case, we're stuck because we've got an outer edge on the right-hand side, and we would need an inner corner on the left-hand lower corner we would have to make an even more complicated tile set to support that, or like sub tiles or something like that. But for the case of these inner three, we can handle this because we've got this, which is sort of like all of the outside is filled, and the only part is that the inside corner is missing. So I could fill in this one here, and now see how much better that looks, and this one here, and this one here. So there we go now, we've got these inner turning corners that kind of support the rest of it. And like I said, this one will look more appropriate for this side if I put that one in, but now the right-hand side looks wrong. So I would have to put this one in and now the left corner looks wrong. I could even try something desperate like putting this in or something, but there's sky showing, so that's not gonna work at all. Or we could see, how does that look? Eh, I could do that, right, maybe. I could try this, not really. This is gonna be the best solution for, for this case, okay? And right here, here's another one that needs it. So we could put that in. And then the rest of these, we would just fill in based on the available tiles that we have. So kind of like that, close enough, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah? Sort of, yeah. Okay. Is there any confusion about why I'm doing this or, or how that works? Not at the moment. No? All right, then. So let me go. Do we have to have Unity for this assignment? No. no. Okay, so you're just using it in, in play. Like you're showing how yeah. it's going to work. Yeah, I'm showing oh. the application of it after you complete the asset. Yeah. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you. Mm hmm that has a question. Yeah. So how do I make, are we making um, the, the tiles or are we following your, your tile setup? What you're doing is replacing this with your own art. All four of those. So for example, each is like, there's a big block, there's a main block, and whatnot. And that's what you're essentially using for like different scenarios. Correct. One would be for like the ground, one for the sky, oh, one okay. for like yeah, and I've got a uh, I've got a guide here to show that what is supposed to be exposed where. So green is a top edge, 
and you can see in here that's a top edge even though this tile here is the one you're supposed to fill in. I'm going to show you guys how to turn on the tile grid in just a second so it's absolutely clear. We've got side edges in red, bottom edges in yellow, okay, and solid in gray. I recommend that you leave this layer alone and you make a layer on top of this so that you can paint whatever you want. Let's just do some red color for some reason, right? So I can paint whatever I want and I've still got the unharmed uh, original down here. And let me go ahead and turn the uh, mask opacity. Oh no, it's already on mask opacity. Oh, here we go, layer opacity down a bit. So we can see that I'm not working on that layer currently. Okay. Does that make sense? So we're just going to fill in this template with details and then you're going to have your own tile set like this one here, right? Because this one is the one that I made a while back. It's all separated by single pixels. So I squeezed it together to actually adhere to that template. But this is the tiles that we were just demonstrating with. Clever. Okay. So do you want us to move this all into Unity after we're finished? No. No, no, no. We're just going to make the tile set. Now, I would love to get Unity like involved in this class, but I don't really think it's within the scope of this class. Um, it's fun, it's easy to learn, but I'm going to leave that for more of the game development courses. Um, just know that if you do want to use Unity, the tutorial section of that website is fantastic. And I'm at least half taught, um, self-taught in Unity, whereas we only had a couple of different um, sort of clinics at Norco that taught us the basics of the program as well. But most of it was straight out of tutorials from that website. So I highly recommend it. Okay. So you, so you just want us to make like the tiles with like the top edge, the side, the bottom and all of that. Right. Makes sense. I come from intro to game, de game design mm -hmm. from like last semester. So we had to work with Unity a lot. And yeah. The first, a lot of that had to do with like Taking cutouts of sprites and it's just smacking them in there. Exactly. So the missing part, right, is how to make those assets. And so if you can make your own, then there you go. I wanted to learn how to do that, but I didn't know how. And obviously, like it was just a matter of first learning how to put in the the assets here, learning how to make this asset. It's actually really involved. Like depending on the asset that you want, there's a lot of different kind of material that you can supply to Unity in order to create your game worlds to say nothing of 3D stuff. Like 3D stuff can be um, a sculpture or it can be a fully articulated and animated character. Um, two dimensional stuff can be textures, which are photographic or pixel art. There's audio components, there's lots and lots of stuff. So you need to take it a little bit at a time and sort of focus in on what your interest is, but know that it's not that hard to figure out once you get going. Oh, I'm well aware. It yeah. is amazing, but also kind of overwhelming for those who are new. I yeah. Know it for me. Yeah. And so I recommend all you guys take the, the game development courses because knowing about those other aspects gives you more choices and more information when you're trying to do your own work. Anyway, let's go ahead and, and look at how, how it is that we would just make our own tile set really quickly. I think you can probably guess what I'm going to do based on this explanation, but just fill in these corners and edges. The one part that you don't see just yet is how these tiles are divided up. Just know that the tiles are 32 pixels by 32 pixels. So if we go into preferences and go to grid, we need to enable the grid size and the grid spacing. So grid spacing is at 32, size is at one pixel. So this is what we get. If we say the size is bigger, that should just be the lines. It didn't seem to change anything, did it? Hmm, didn't seem to really change anything. I guess it doesn't care, but we could change the spacing to like 16. You can see that this still lines up on a grid, but now every one of those tiles is like four tiles. So you want to leave it on 32 so that you know right where a tile begins and ends. Oh yeah, Bracky's on uh, YouTube is fantastic. Yeah, doesn't really cover like fundamentals, but he covers a lot of really good stuff. Well, I think they had a fundamental series at one point for just how to like program. Anyway, so here's how it breaks down. You've got this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 for your basic landmass, 3 for a vertical 1 wide, 3 for a horizontal 1 tall, 1 floating one, and then these 4 interior angles. But I want you guys to do something a little bit more than just make it look exactly the way that my example looked. In my example, I'm doing the stereotypical kind of like rock and grass sort of thing. 
but if you can theme it a little bit more interesting then you're gonna have a bit more fun with it so consider your options like I've got an example in my folder here of sort of a spooky castle this adheres to all the same rules that we were just observing with the one exception that they've got like an, a diagonal shape okay but you can do whatever you want this could be like um, underground it could be sewers it could be robots it could be whatever the heck you want really um, just use your imagination and figure out um, what it is that you'd like to do for a very brief example though I'm just gonna freehand just kind of draw a cloudy sort of shape going around this just sort of like that and I'm just drawing it with a, a red pen and I'll fill it in with something else so let's fill it in with like pink bam like that we want to be careful not to leave the size of the tile but it's okay to leave some blank space keeping in mind that you're gonna to try to make the tile match up with its neighbors okay so I'm just going to uh, sample this red and move this down just a little bit so that I don't have it sticking out the top like this there we go just so I don't have that leaving that space and then take a quick look around to make sure everything else is lining up so like right here it left the tile size I'm gonna get rid of that and that's about fine let's fill that back in Did I do that up here okay, no. and so now everything's stuck inside of this bounding box okay be as consistent as possible something that we're gonna want to take care of then is the fact that some of these might need to combine with some of these other tiles over here so you can kind of imagine that we've got a straight flat wall right like this one that ends up turning into a single wide column so what I might want to do is copy this and paste this over here to make sure that my wall size is kind of adhering to this same wall size because the same thing could happen vertically we could have a solid wall and then we could have a little tooth of ground protruding above so we want to make sure that this wall and this wall match same thing for the left over here on the left if I grab and it's gonna to have to kind of just be arbitrary going into it I'm just gonna copy this left hand wall and move this selection over to the left of this portion and paste I want that to line up as well and of course I've got to fill that in with transparency so that I don't have the red extending out so that makes sure that if I had this wall extending upward into a little tooth then the bottom of this would line up or does it okay so let's take a look at this does this wall right now repeat vertically infinitely if I copy paste this above itself over and over would it repeat no right can you guys see that that's true that that wouldn't repeat here's, so here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna copy it and I'm gonna paste it down here in the open where I've got nothing just so I have a nice free area so paste and I'm gonna drag it below itself and paste I'm gonna do it one more time just so I have three copies okay this is the tiling of that single um, that single asset that single tile right now you can see that it just you know violently resets itself over and over so we've actually got to fix that before this is a viable asset um, in the other example oh did I close it to open this or do I oh I never actually opened it did I ah, that's okay um, so in our other example whenever the rock I could just open it over here whenever the rock ends it's in such a way that we've got a boulder a complete boulder and the next tile has a boulder as well so it kind of makes sense that that's where it would repeat over and over again we can sort of see this happening in unity um, do I have any vertical walls well let's just make a vertical wall then. let's put it right scene let's put it right here there we go so now we can see in the game view that's how this asset is repeating over and over so it might not look perfect sometimes you can see how it repeats but it's good enough that it doesn't look incomplete it doesn't look like it's being harmed by the tiling or anything so we got to solve this I'm going to sample the dark red and then just kind of ease that transition by putting a little block here and here and then delete out that 
and that. So now it's kind of waving up and down over and over. And all I had to do is change a little bit. I did that on the center tile, right? So that I have just one thing that I can copy paste back into position again to have a nice complete pattern for my asset. Is there any way to like switch between pen and like block? Or like a little tile Be um, block? Between what and block? Oh, you mean like the the fact that I grabbed a whole tile? Well, no. Like sometimes I see like you draw and then it looks like it's you're just using a pen, and then the other times it looks like you're using actual like little tiles. And I don't know. Oh, that's just the size. Oh, really? Yeah, right up here. This is a oh, single okay. pixel size, yeah. and this is four. Or why does it say four? That's two by two. It's one to four. One to four. What does one to four mean? The first one is one pixel, second one's two, then three, then four. On that. On that. Oh, it's highlighting the entire... Th oh, okay. Yeah. I thought it was telling me what size that was. So this one's three pixels, and this one's four pixels. And you can keep going higher than that with the uh, brackets, I think. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Hey, look at that. <laughs> I actually didn't know that. I don't think I've read the, the controls in a while. But that's good. So yeah, I'm just using this one to fill in that detail. Um, so yeah, now this left-hand side is working properly, but now look the corner doesn't work, right? Because the corner is sort of a standalone. It's never going to tile with itself. It's only going to tile with vertical, other vertical lines, right? So we might have a corner that turns into a single tooth projecting down or a single repeating uh, tile. We'll more likely have a corner that turns into a flat wall or an internal edge like one of these over here. So we, we've actually got to be pretty methodical about how we construct this once you have your concept. So now I've got a repeating vertical left-hand wall. I should probably do a repeating vertical right-hand wall before doing anything else. But after that, I'm going to make sure that the corners line up as well. So let me go ahead and do this other side. Because you'll see once we get this nine grid complete, the rest of them are just some sort of permutation of that. So let's go ahead and paste this down here. I doodled over there a little bit, so let's just do it over here. Paste, paste, paste. And you can see this one's got major tiling issues. So what I'll do is select this red, and I want to end probably at least here. I think that's that's all I really needed to do. Because as soon as this one is changed down here, yeah, I think, yeah, we've got a pretty a pretty good tile now. We could test this. If you're ever not sure, you can delete, delete, and then just repaste this modified tile next to itself. Paste and paste. And so now you can check the tiling. It's a little bit sudden, kind of sharp, but it'll do. So I'm going to copy this and paste it back up into the 9 grid. There is actually a better way to do this I'm going to show in a moment, but it's a little bit more technical and it's easy to mess it up. Uh, but I wanted to show you guys the what I call the old-fashioned way first, because this is tried and true. It doesn't matter what tool you're using. You could always just copy and paste as long as you've got a grid to work on top of. So now that part would work properly, and we might want to even have like a running tally of which ones of these have not been modified yet. So I would do something like just put a little X in all of the ones that I haven't done any modification to yet. And of course, I don't have any detail on any of this, so it's easy to do. If you detail too early, it's going to make this process very, very uncomfortable. Okay, The center is not going to need anything, and these two have already been modified, so I'll leave them blank. Okay, And then this one would also need modification, but I'll just recopy it later. Okay. Uh, any questions about that so far? No, all good here. Okay. Let's look at a slightly more complicated example then, which is going to utilize Piscal to do the tiling for us. Um, these are 32 by 32 pixel tiles. Um, if you're ever not sure about that, you can check by using a rectangular selection. And while you're dragging your selection, like don't let go of the mouse. But in the lower right hand corner, you can see in parentheses um, 32 by 32. And actual coordinates, I'm going from the 32nd pixel to the 63rd pixel um, 
and the total size of the document is 320 by 320. Okay, so once I let go, I don't, I no longer have that information, but it's nice information to have to check the tile size of something. So this time, I'm going to create a new sprite. I'm going to set the total size to 32. There we go, already set. Just check, yep, that's the size of one pixel, so that makes sense. And we're going to enable tiling mode. So tiling mode, I'm going to go ahead and click that on. We have a little mask opacity, which means when I draw something, we can see ghostly copies of that thing off to the left and right. And you can actually see this in action in my background here. On each one of these layers, I use tiling mode to make the mountains line up with each other, to make the trees line up with each other, and to make the sky detail line up with itself. So if we wanted to do something like, say, make these platforms out of like brass pipes or something, then I could turn this pixel size up to like four and grab a brass color. So something like a little dingy brown orange or something. Let's go like about there. And I'm going to just delete this. Then I could figure out how to make um, winding pipes go through this square, but hook back up to themselves once they get to the other side. So I'm going to let's say establish a pattern here mm, yeah more like that so have this pipe right come up and I'm gonna have it go over is that how I did it yeah that's how I did it come over so now I'm leaving I'm exiting this right so I need it to come in over here and let's have it turn up now it's coming back into the same tile from the bottom so now I've got to like cross them over Okay, and it could go on like this forever unless I um, make it like coincide with this pipe. So instead of crossing over, let's see. Well, I will have that one cross over just for a cool example of making it look right. But I'll have it turn into a T intersection on this one right here. Or yeah, that looks kind of dumb. Maybe just have this one be a T intersection. What do you guys want to see? You, want, you guys want to see me cross them over or just do a T intersection down there? Go all the way, cross them over. Okay, let's do that. So we'll have there, there, and so now this will be a T intersection. So I'm going to turn my tile size back or my uh, pen size back down again. And we would want to add details because we know the pattern is going to work now. Or wait, does it? Uh, 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 oh, look, where's this one ending? This one's not ending anywhere, is it? But we could do something like this. Let's have this enter in and we'll just cap that off. We'll give it some sort of spigot like this with like a, a little turn valve or something on the end there right so we've got this interesting pattern and we could do different sizes of pipes as well I'm gonna actually do this with a different color let's use um, a more silver lead a bit darker like this so we could also have like pipes of size 2 coming up from here let's have it turn around that actually looks really bad I think it's got to be more like that have it come out here now we've got to make it enter back in on this side we'll have this turn up I suppose and let's have it turn over as well let's fill that in so it's like behind there or let's make it in front in front we'll have it come Actually, that's a little weird. It's like crossing over strangely. I shouldn't be so picky about this really for a demonstration. There we go. We'll have it cross under like that. And then I'll have it make go down and this way. Now it's coming back in over here. We'll have it go right behind this entire thing <laughs> for some reason. And behind that as well now it's coming in from the top and let's just make it go inside with itself there so we've got like this infinite pipe kind of setup um, I it almost makes me wish I didn't cap that one off but we do have one error right here this one is not going anywhere so we either have to cap it off or we have to make it turn and stop at some other pipe let's make it turn this way and we'll have it stop whoop, right there okay so now with a single wide 
I'm going to grab this again. I'm going to use like a darker brown to start shading this thing to look more like a pipe. And this will start to give us an idea of what's overlapping what. So in this one, if I just draw that straight through like that, we're going to feel like that pipe is going over the other one. And if we add things like a little bit of a shadow underneath the other one, then it makes it feel like it's going over top the thing. Okay. Let's also add like a highlight color. Let's just grab that. So let's see if I do right across the top. So this one, I could stop the highlight briefly just to kind of break that line. Kind of like this. It makes me feel like I need to darken in this whole side, but then it's a little hard to see, but just a kind of simple example anyway. Yeah, I can noodle this, but it's probably not best to do that right now. Uh, there we go. I like that. And I guess I could stop the shadow here too if I wanted to, but let's not do that. So filling this all in is going to start to give the impression that they're overlapping now. Over here, I said that we wanted to make this look like they coincide with each other, like they, they turn into one pipe. So instead of having this continue like that, I'm going to start breaking that off and I need like extra details like a coupling or something. So a coupling would be a little bit larger. Let's make a coupling right here and one unfortunately right there next to that other detail and then fill in these details like that I guess. Or I could make it go this way. Let's go that way. And then probably want to like shade the whole underside of it and the whole right side of it. So the whole underside like that. Yeah, so that's about right. And then this pipe would continue like that. And the highlight would continue. And if that doesn't look quite right, we could mess around with like replacing the material of the coupling, like making it slightly different or the entire, you know, T intersection or something like that. But you see how I'm able to get these details to sort of like coincide with their other part, their counterparts and other sides of this texture. Like right here, this corner is incomplete, but you can see the detail that's coming from here and here um, feeding into it. And so I could very easily just sample this color and fill in that. Did I do this corner weird? Yeah, I did. There we go. Fixed it. There we go. Okay. Does that make sense for you guys? Yes, yeah. actually. Cool. I turned it on once during the Mario run. Yeah. Okay, so I fill them all in like that. Probably put a shadow on this side for this one. Something doesn't look quite right there, but I don't know. <laughs> and then if we wanted to texture this different, so I could make that like a red valve, maybe your classic kind of red valve, and then probably grayish metal. And probably want to give that some other sort of detail, but that'll do for the moment and so on and such forth, right? Um, we can actually see this pop-out preview can show all the tiling, let's see. Oh, the pop-out didn't do it, but this one sure did. Hmm, okay, well anyway, you can see it up there. It's just like a little bit small. I don't know why it didn't let me zoom in, but this is an example if you wanted a much more complicated kind of texture. You could make all of your tiles like these interlocking pipes um, we could put brick and mortar behind this if we wanted to. So we have like pipes and brick and mortar making up all of our tiles. And we'd have to figure out how to make all of that detail lead into the other tiles so that your tile set made sense. So if we were going to make a nine grid of this detail, I'm going to copy this. It's all in one layer, so it's going to be easy enough to copy. But if you have multiple layers, you might have to copy paste a few times. So I'm going to hit control C, go over to this one. I'm going to hit control V. The only downside of working with multiple PISCL files is that when you paste into a new one, 
it will always go into the upper left hand corner however big you select it. So just be aware of that. So I've got to reselect this now. Oh, let's be careful. Okay, so I'm going to cut, move, and I could paste this right here, for instance. Am I on a new layer? Let's see. No, I'm on the same layer I was on. So I could probably copy this and put it on a different layer. Struggling with Piskel's controls a little bit. There we go. Let's copy that. Make a new layer. Now move and paste. So what we know is if that's the middle and then this is the side where this ends, we'd have to do something else with these tiles. We'd have to end them um, not going off the edge of that tile. And I don't really know what the diagonals would look like yet because they don't need to match up with the center one, but I could sort of make them up. So just for another example to kind of keep this going, instead of bringing this off the edge and bringing this in, that one I'd probably want to get rid of entirely. And this one I could either end early or I could like turn it down, I guess. Like let's try turning it down. We'll make it go, because we want to create sort of an edge on this side, let's make it go straight down here into the corner. Dupe, dupe. And there. So now it's going down instead of up. This one makes a lot of sense going up um, and I could utilize it to sort of sculpt out the, the corner of this one. Like maybe we make this take a small adjust up like this and then over so that it can follow the edge more um, tightly. Like that. But since there's no entry into this one, we'd have to move it off this way but hey look at that over there we've got a nice place to put some detail right there we could finish it out now that looks a bit empty but we've got this one that needs somewhere to go so we could probably make a T intersection or put some other pipes in there crisscrossing around or just you know plain old do something like that who knows but we got to fill up that detail somehow so in a really brief sketch all this stuff has to connect somehow right however it is that you want to do it and make up the, the nice solid shape of the block. And who knows what it is that you choose to do, but you could literally just kind of sketch with your mouse and then you know fix it all up nice and careful after the fact. Okay. So that's a little haphazard and messy, but it would work essentially. I just have to straighten everything all out. Okay. Questions? Does this make sense? Yes, it does. Um, I know this might sound stupid, but what do you mean by brick and mortar? You know, brick, mortar, red, red brick, gray mortar, oh, okay. like a like a wall. <laughs> I got you, I got you. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, is that a tool? Is that something confusing? No. It's... No, it's just the real world thing. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Do you guys need additional examples or demonstration, or is this enough for you to complete your work? It might be. I mean, this is a this is a really detailed thing. I, I mean, I, I I definitely understand what I need to do. Cool. There are options as well that if on the top of these you wanted to make like grass standing up, then you could do that. Just make sure that it again tiles correctly, that the edge falls off if it's going to fall off, that the center can repeat with itself infinitely. Or depending on what this is, it could be like mushroom spores or something. Just make sure there's a satisfying pattern of them repeating horizontally. A lot of different stuff you could do. You got it. Okay. Anybody else? Concerns, questions, complete, you know, mental breakdowns? Uh, I don't know. Do we have uh, the tile sets that you made in, our, in the resources folder? What you have in the resources folder is just this, which is the starter. But in Canvas, you have um, at least three or four of these to look at as examples. Like I believe I put this one in here as well to show the problem with corners, or I made a new example or something. I know for sure that this one is in there. Um, 
and then I think maybe this one as well. Probably the Zelda, probably the Roller Coaster Tycoon one. Okay, cool, thank you. Okay. All right, you guys, if that's it, then that'll end that demonstration. Um, the ending step of this would just be saving it as a PNG. So I'd learn, or save your PISCL file, of course, but exporting as a PNG single sprite sheet. Uh, if you do this completely correctly, adhering to the template just like this, then what I can do on review day is take yours and automatically chop it up in Unity because I can show you that process then and paint with your tile set right here in this environment. Okay. Uh, let me just check real fast if I included a background as part of your assignment because I can't remember if I did. But the process is identical. I kind of intended on doing a background. Like, That'd be a good idea. Be, like that little tiny little box would have been like worth like a star or something so that way you could like paint some stars in the, the sky. One just, would be for, like, the sky stuff and the other would be for, like a little detail like a star. Don't put a background on this file. If you're going to do a background, do it as a square image as a different file and name it so that I can tell the difference. Uh, the one I made was 64 um, uh, tall and wide. So it's just like two by two of these, something like that. Or if you put a background somewhere in here, like down in the empty space, that would work also. I could always reinterpret that. Let me see if I, I the empty space. let me see if I require it though. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I did not require it. Okay, so all you got to do is make the um, tile set. You don't have to make the background. And here's a few extra examples in the assignment as well. Okay. What I would prefer is if you guys did this but had a little bit of fun with it, themed it some way that you think would be fun, um, you could come up with like, um, you know, Halloween-esque kind of like cobweb platforms or Christmas is coming up, you can make them out of candy canes or actually Thanksgiving before that. So these could be like little floating piles of food or something like that. Um, sky's the limit, have a little bit of fun with it. Um, it's really cool to see it working in a game development situation. Okay. Perfect. I won't spoil what, I, what mine's gonna be. All right, cool guys. Then that is gonna be it for today. Thank you. If you have any more questions, hang around and ask me.